The night began like any other for Emily until strange noises woke her from a deep sleep. At first, she thought it might be a raccoon or perhaps a stray cat, but the sounds were far too loud and unsettling for that. As she peered out the window, she could hardly believe her eyes. A massive brown bear, the largest she had ever seen, was scaling the side of her neighbor's house. The sight was both awe-inspiring and terrifying, and what made it even worse was that Emily soon realized she might have been the unintentional cause of this wild intrusion. The bear moved with surprising agility, pulling itself up the wooden side panels of the house. Within moments, it reached the second-story window, which had been left open. Emily watched in horror as the bear slipped inside her neighbor Caroline's home, disappearing from view. A sense of dread filled her. Caroline, an elderly woman with whom Emily had formed a close friendship, was most likely asleep inside. Without wasting another moment, Emily tried to warn her neighbor. Caroline, Caroline, she screamed, hoping her voice would wake the old woman. But there was no response. The house remained silent and the bear was still inside. Emily knew she had to act quickly. Despite the fear coursing through her, she climbed over the fence separating their properties and hurried into Caroline's garden. With a final burst of courage, she entered the house, determined to find her friend and get her to safety. Inside, the house was eerily quiet except for the occasional growl coming from above. The noise was unmistakable. The bear was in the attic. Emily's heart pounded as she navigated the dark hallway, trying to make sense of the situation. Why had the bear gone to such lengths to enter the house? Did Caroline leave food out that attracted it? Or was something else going on? Emily made her way upstairs to Caroline's bedroom, her footsteps barely making a sound on the old wooden floor. She found the door ajar and cautiously pushed it open. There, in the corner of the room, was Caroline, trembling with fear. Caroline, are you hurt? Emily whispered urgently. No, I'm okay, Caroline replied shakily. I woke up when I heard something, and then I saw the bear coming through the window. I hid in the corner and haven't moved since. Relief washed over Emily, but only for a moment. Caroline was safe, but the bear was still in the house. Where did it go? Emily asked. Caroline pointed a trembling finger toward the attic stairs. The bear was up there, and so, apparently, were Caroline's four kittens. The kittens had a habit of curling up in Caroline's bed every morning, but today they were nowhere to be seen. Emily's fear for the kittens overrode her terror of the bear. She knew she had to get them out, but the thought of confronting the massive animal made her stomach turn. Still, she couldn't just leave them. I'll get the kittens, she told Caroline, hoping to sound more confident than she felt. Carefully, Emily approached the attic stairs. The door was slightly open, and from inside, she could hear a mix of sounds, the low, steady breathing of the bear and the high-pitched mews of the kittens. She paused at the threshold, her mind racing. She didn't have to go all the way in. Maybe she could coax the kittens out from the doorway. With trembling hands, Emily pushed the door open wider. The light from the hallway illuminated part of the attic floor, revealing two of the kittens darting about. But before she could lure them closer, a loud roar echoed through the space, followed by the sight of the bear stepping into the light. Emily's breath caught in her throat as she instinctively took a step back, nearly losing her balance at the top of the stairs. But what she saw next stopped her cold. Instead of attacking the kittens, the bear was surprisingly gentle. The kittens, seemingly unfazed by the enormous predator, played around its legs as if it were their mother. What on earth is happening? Emily wondered, her fear momentarily replaced by bewilderment. The bear nudged the kittens back toward the darker side of the attic, almost as if it were guiding them. Emily, now more curious than terrified, took out her phone and turned on the flashlight. The beam revealed a sight she never could have imagined. The bear was sitting on its haunches, with the four kittens nestled in its lap, purring contentedly as the bear gently licked them. Realizing the kittens were in no immediate danger, 
Emily backed away slowly, returning to Caroline's bedroom. We need to get out of here, she urged, helping the older woman to her feet. Caroline looked confused, her eyes searching Emily's for answers. The kittens are with the bear, Emily explained quickly. But we need to go now. We'll come back for them with help. They hurried downstairs and out into the garden. Emily quickly called the local animal rescue team, who she knew had been tracking a large bear spotted around town for the past week. Within 30 minutes, two men arrived in a truck, John, a seasoned wildlife rescuer, and his son, Connor. We've been trying to catch this bear for days, John said as they prepared to enter the house. Every time someone spots her, she's gone before we can get there. But we never imagined she was caring for kittens. Emily's eyes widened in shock. How did you know about the kittens? She asked. Every time we got close to catching the bear, People reported seeing her with four little kittens by her side, John explained. We didn't understand why until now. She must have adopted them after their mother died. They were found near a road not far from here. The mother had been hit by a car. Emily felt a wave of guilt wash over her. I found those kittens in an alley and brought them to Caroline, she admitted, tears welling up. If I hadn't taken them, none of this would have happened. You did what you thought was best, John reassured her. There's no way you could have known the bear was looking after them. John and Connor entered the house, while Emily and Caroline waited anxiously outside. After about 15 minutes, the back door opened, and the two men emerged, carefully maneuvering a tranquilized bear onto a mechanical stretcher. The kittens followed close behind, unharmed, and as playful as ever. What will happen to the bear? Emily asked, relieved but still concerned for the creature that had caused so much chaos. We'll take her to the sanctuary, John explained. We'll monitor her health and make sure she's ready to be released back into the wild. A few months later, Emily received a call from John. He sounded cheerful, and Emily could hear the excitement in his voice. Why don't you and Caroline come to the sanctuary, he suggested. We have something special planned. When they arrived, John and Connor were waiting for them with the bear, who had fully recovered and was ready to be released back into the wild. But before that, they wanted to give the bear a proper farewell. Caroline brought the kittens along, and as soon as they were released into the enclosure, they ran straight to their adoptive mother. It was a heartwarming sight, and Emily couldn't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude. Despite the fear and confusion of that night, the bond between the bear and the kittens had turned into something beautiful. The bear even allowed Emily to pick up the kittens, a sign that she had accepted their separation. As they watched the bear roam free in the sanctuary, Emily realized that sometimes the most unexpected encounters can lead to the most profound connections. The bear had come to Caroline's house not as a threat, but as a mother searching for her lost family. And in the end, everyone found their way back home.